You know, new levels means new devils. <laughs> I don't want to be negative, but I just want to say that if you're going somewhere, you're going to meet some people up there. <laughs> you're going to meet some people that are going to try to stop you. You're going to, you're going to, somebody's going to try to put a spanner in the works. Somebody that will, you know, just stare. New levels, new devils. Uh, we read in scriptures from the very beginning, Satan tried to stop God's plan. God's desire was that he would have a family. I, I praise God for the family atmosphere that's in this church. This, you know, it, it, it's an amazing thing to have that family atmosphere. But to see God plan to have a family. And God's going to have a family, amen? But the enemy come to try to stop it. We find in Genesis chapter 3. I'm just going to read a couple of scriptures here. It says, Now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, Has God indeed said, You shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, You shall not eat it, nor shall you touch it lest you die. Then the serpent said to the woman, Ha ha ha, you won't die. <laughs> you won't die. You won't surely die. For God knows in the day that you eat it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. You know, one of the great curses of this earth today is the knowledge of good and evil. Our children today, as they're growing up, know evil. They do silly things. Children are just going crazy. But here is a situation where God creates a man and a woman and his desire is to be a family. And the enemy comes in to try to stop it. We know there that, that uh, the Bible says that God came down in the cool of the evening. Genesis 3 verse 8. It says, And they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord. Can I say this? People are hiding themselves from the presence of the Lord. I'm coming in to the presence of God. <laughs> I'm coming in, hallelujah. I don't want to hide from the presence of God. I want to lift up my heart. I want to be an open book in His presence. I want for His anointing to be able to come and touch my life. I want to make room for God, amen. If you don't make room for God, what's going to happen? And it says there that they hid from the presence of the Lord among the trees of the garden. And verse 9 is a sad verse. And the Lord God called to Adam and Eve and said to him, Where are you? And church, that's the big question today. Where are you? Where, where are you? Are you hiding amongst the trees? Are you trying to hide from something or where are you? Where am I today? And that's why I'm so conscious today that you can hide yourself and I can hide myself from God or else I can open myself for his presence to come into my life. There are so many people today that were once on fire for God that today are hidden among the trees. And I would imagine today that as God who created mankind and all that God did, he created all the animals and, and all these things. And here he is now, he's got Adam and Eve, and he believes that, that you know, he's given, her a woman, he's given him a woman that he can love and care for, that they can spend this time reproducing, multiplying, and he could have this family that he could come down amongst in the cool of the evening and fellowship with and pour out his love and his mercy. See, that's God. God wants to pour out his love and his mercy upon us. But the enemy comes in. I, I believe that that day as God would have walked in the cool of the evening, as he would have come there and, and he cries out, I believe that there would have been tears in his eyes as he would have said, where are you? 
Come on, hey, come on, come on. I want to gather you as a hen would gather her chicks. Come on, I want to love on you. I want to, I want to do all this. I want to just be your God. I want to be your dad. I want you to be my children. But you're hiding. Where are you? Where are you? It's time to pull the facades down. It's time to, to let everything that can be seen, let it be seen. It's time to be open before the presence of God. It's time to let God be God. Where are you? You see, God doesn't hide from man. Man hides from God. God is very, very willing and very, very open. In Genesis 3.13, uh, the woman said, the serpent deceived me. And the Lord God said to the woman, what is this you have done? And the woman said, the serpent deceived me and I ate. And the Lord said to the serpent, because you have done this, you are cursed more than all the cattle. But I want to tell you right from the get-go, God cursed the devil. Right from the get-go, he said, on your belly you go. The devil never said, hey, I'm not doing that. No, he went on his belly immediately. And you're going to eat dust all the days of your life. And I'm going to raise one up from this woman that's going to crush your head. Yeah. Amen. That's God's plan. But the enemy will try to stop the plan of God. The church triumphant. The church victorious. Ruling and reigning with Christ. Amen. That's who we are. The world is yet to see the full release of his promise, you and I in victory. I believe that the time is coming when God is training his church to rule and reign with him. But you don't have to shout it. You don't have to spit it. You just have to say it. Devil, get out of my face. You're a liar, you are a cheat, you are a thief, and you are done in Jesus' name. You are done. Romans 5:17 says, For if by one man's offense death reigned through the one, everybody say much. Much more those who receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness will reign in life through the one Jesus Christ. Amen. How many people believe that's worth a clap? <laughs> that's worth a bit of a shout. Amen. For if by one man's offense, death reigned through the one, much more those who receive abundance of grace. Put up your hand if you've received abundance of grace. Put up your hand if you've received the Lord Jesus Christ. Come on, make a statement. I have received Jesus. He is my Lord. I have received abundance of grace. I have received it. It is mine, amen. I have received abundance of grace. And of the gift of righteousness will reign in life through the one Jesus Christ. We find in the book of Luke 4.1 that Jesus was tempted by the devil. In Luke 4.14, that it says, Then Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit. Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit. You see, he came to try to stop Jesus. He'll try to stop the church. But if we understand what God's plan is, and if we understand the abundance of grace and the abundance of righteousness that's in our life, that God wants you and I to rule and reign, we won't be put down, we won't be put off, we won't be pushed behind some tree hiding, but we will return in the power of the Spirit. Hallelujah. We will return. Amen. The church of the living God will return. It will rise up out of the ashes. It will be the church of the living God. It will triumph over every enemy. It will overcome. It will rail and reign in life by one Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Not by works, not by anything man can do, but, but what my God will do by his spirit. Hallelujah. It is not by might, it is not by power, but it's by my spirit, hallelujah. Jesus rules and reigns and so do we. 
But if you don't bind the thoughts, if you don't bind the actions of the enemy, I want to tell you, you will go down the gurgler like anybody else. That's who we are. Hallelujah. Amen. Sharabundi kasapande. The, will, the enemy will come. I want you to note this. Note this. The enemy will come, but against all odds, when you resist him, he, the devil, will be sorry he messed with you. Because you will come back in the spirit, in power of the spirit. The enemy will be sorry he messed with you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please take note of this, and I'm going to say it again. The enemy will come against, uh, come against us, and against all the odds, when you resist him, he, the devil, will be sorry he messed with you because you will come back in the power of the Spirit. And like Jesus, you will make a statement that will send the devil reaching for the valium. He'll be running to the medical thing looking for the, the what do you call it, fort. <laughs> Panadol fort. <laughs> How many people want to give the enemy a headache? Yeah. Oh, shut up, Wendy. Jesus came back and he said, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me because God has anointed me to kick devil butt. Hallelujah. That's what God is going to do. Friend, I want to tell you, when the enemy comes at you one way, he has to flee seven ways. Hallelujah. When you can rise up, you will give the devil a headache. You will give him that because you're going to stand and declare. I want to tell you, friends, it's time to declare what our God says. And we can say the spirit of the Lord is upon me because God has anointed me to kick devil butt. Hallelujah. And we will speak the truth. And the truth is what will make people free. Hallelujah. The Lord has anointed me. 1 Peter 5. The Bible says in 6 and 7, 8 and 9. Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God. I love that. Humble yourselves under the mighty hand. Hand of God. Hey, can you get that into you? Humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God. I want to tell you there's no greater place you can position yourself. There's no other place to position yourself. You can humble yourself. And what does that mean? It says, it means, it's, you know, proud. No, God. God, I can't do it, but I know you can. And I position myself right now under the authority of the headship of our God. And my God, I come under that. And my God, you will deliver me. Under the mighty hand of God. Put myself under the mighty hand of God. Hallelujah. That he may exalt you in due time. Casting all your cares upon him, for he cares for you. Some people are hiding today because they don't think God cares for them. Some people are hiding today because of something that's disappointed them, something that didn't happen the way they thought it should happen. Well, friend, can I remind you that your ways are not God's ways? And God's ways are not your ways, but God's ways are always higher than your ways. And if you don't allow the enemy to put you into Grumble Alley, if you see it through and you resist the devil, God will take you to a place where he can exalt you in due season. Ooh. <laughs> devil didn't like that one. Casting all your cares upon him, for he cares for you. Be sober and vigilant because your adversary, the adversary, the devil walks around like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Resist him steadfast in the faith. 
The enemy goes around like a roar. I want to tell you, friends, there are many tragedies. There are many accidents that take place as the enemy goes around like a roaring lion. But if you know the word of God, and if you know what God says, yes, he will come. But when he comes, if you can resist him steadfastly, God will exalt you. If you can humble yourself in the presence of God and say, God, greater is he that's within me than he that's within the world. And no weapon formed against me is going to prosper. And I'm not going to allow the devil to take me out because of this thing. I'm going to rise up and I'm going to become the man or the woman that God wants me to become in Jesus' name. We're going to push through this thing. And God will exalt you in due season. Oh man, there's, there's not one person on this planet that hasn't had many, many opportunities to walk away. But hallelujah, we're still here. We're still here, hallelujah, Rabo Shatura Monday. Peter speaks of a devil as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. James 4 6 says, God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Therefore, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. That means run in terror. I want to tell you that we could scare the living daylights out of the devil. We could scare him out of his little red suit. We could scare him to, if we just stood up there and said, Hey, hairy legs, get out of my face. Get out of my way. If you can see the devil on his belly eating dust all the days of his life, knowing that God was going to raise up a church, raise up a people, raise up a champion, the name of Jesus, raise up our Messiah that was going to overtake him and overthrow him and crush his head. Oh, the devil's a liar, amen. Jesus is alive. When Christians come and whinge and complain, say, get alive. Get over it. Run in terror. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. I want to tell you, friends, I take every minute I can of these song services, the prayer meetings, whatever we're doing, when I'm in my own personal devotion, to draw near to God. How easy is that? Draw near to God and he will draw near to me. How amazing. What an amazing God we serve. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. 1 John 2, 14, it says, Because you are strong and the word of God abides in you. I'd rather believe that. Because you are strong and the word of God abides in you and you have come, overcome the wicked ones. Because you are strong, that's 1 John 2.14. Because you are strong and the word of God abides in you. Friend, if you don't have the word of God in you, you've got nothing. If you've just got a feeling or a this or a that, you've got nothing. We've got to have the word of God. Amen. My word shall not return to me void, but it will accomplish that which I purposed it to accomplish. Hallelujah. The word, I I, I pray you don't mind me using the word of God this morning. (laughs) Because you are strong and the word of God abides in you and you have overcome the wicked one. Friends, let me say this. You shall know the truth and the truth will make you free. Amen. Ephesians 1, it goes here, verse 17. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you, or other words, revelation knowledge, that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints and what is the exceeding greatness of his power towards us. Let me just read this again. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe? In other words, God's power is outstretched towards us who believe. 
God is pouring his power right now upon you. Right now, God's power is being poured out upon his church. The power of God is being poured out. You don't have to wait for something. Oh, God. No, he said, I am already pouring out my power upon you now. If you believe God's power is being poured out upon you and we are receivers of the divine intervention of God. We are receivers of the power of God. Hallelujah. The divine power of God is outstretched towards me. It is not some little thing that you'll find in the back of somewhere, but it's being poured out. There is a river and it's flowing from God above. Hallelujah. There is a river and it's filled with God himself hallelujah (laughs) according to the working of his mighty power which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him his own right hand in heavenly places far above all principalities in power and might and dominion. I want to tell you, friends, you get yourself, you draw near to God and you get yourself underneath his armpit. You get yourself under there and you'll find yourself far above principalities and powers. You won't be grumbling about the devil's doing this and the devil's doing that because God is your protection, hallelujah, and his divine power is outstretched towards you, hallelujah. The devil's got no answers. Hmm. Hear this because I believe it's important. Though your faith in God, through your faith in God, there is a divine power being directed toward you. Even now, resurrection power is being directed towards you. Healing power, anointing power, whatever it is, is being directed towards you. But if you're hiding behind a tree, it can't get to you. If you don't believe, it won't get to you. The same power that raised Jesus from the dead now flows towards you. Believe a lie, you die. Genesis 3, you believe a lie. He said, you will not die. But something died inside humanity that day. You'll be like God, he said. I don't know how much more like God they could have ever been. God said he created them in his image and in his likeness. Amen. The devil will tell the most stupid lies. Samson, Judges 16. Here's this man that God raised up. Can I say this? I honestly believe that God is raising up the church to do something so dynamic and so powerful. It will boggle the minds of humanity. And here is a young man that God put his hand on as a baby and said, he is mine. I believe that God said the church is his and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. I'm going to build my church, but it doesn't matter because it's his doesn't mean that the devil won't try to steal. And here is this man, Samson. I believe a great man. And he started to play with the devil. He started to play with things that he shouldn't touch. Friend, can I say this? I believe it's a time for the church to start putting away some unclean things. I'm not trying to be a judge or anything like that. I'm just saying it's time to put away some unclean things because some of those things are going to take you out of the presence of God. 
God's grace and mercy is amazing. But it's time to do a deal and start to get rid of some things. And so the enemy came and said, where is the source of your great power? Friend, don't play the devil's game. Don't play the devil's game. He said, if you cut my hair, I'll become weak like other men. We know that Delilah cut his hair. But one of the saddest things is when you play with the devil, you lose something. He did not know that the Lord had departed from him. It wasn't that his strength was in his hair. The strength was in his relationship with God. His strength was in the calling of God. I believe that we are called. The church is called. He was a Nazarite with a call to deliver Israel. I believe that the church is going to rise up and deliver Australia. Amen. Samson was God's anointed vessel to deliver Israel from the Philistines. The church is God's anointed vessel to deliver God's children from Satan's grip, Satan's lie. Today what we find is that the gifts of the Spirit are finished with the apostles. Many preachers preach that today. Many people say, don't pray for the sick to recover. People get discouraged when it doesn't happen. Don't talk in tongues, it may offend somebody. God forbid that we could do, that the church, we could be that people. That we could do church and not realize that God had departed from us. I know I'm talking pretty straight right now. But friend, we can, just because we come to a building, high steeple, the only thing that's moving is the ivy up the walls. <laughs> you can do church and not realize that God has departed from us. Friend, we've got to keep the hunger burning. We've got to keep the hunger going. We've got to stir up the hunger. We've got to stir it up, stir it up, stir it up, stir it up. We've got to plug in when, even if you don't feel like it. Even if it's, it's, uh, you don't feel like it, dance, shout, jump, do something, hallelujah. Lift up those hands that hang down. Shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Praise the King of Kings. <laughs> Let the glory of the Lord be revealed. What a sad thing. And I just want to finish with this. In Mark Chapter 16. I went to a church many years ago in Melbourne or Adelaide, somewhere there. And this man preached these verses of Scripture every Sunday, every Tuesday, every Wednesday. He preached from this verse every day. And I remember Clark and I went up there to see and to see what was going on because we'd heard that there was something happening. When we first looked at it, it looked so strange because he, he preached this and then he made an altar call and people just came out and laid on the floor. And we thought, how strange is this? How strange is this? Then he started to pray for people and minister to people and people were jumping around and doing things. And in the natural, it looked so stupid. But after a while, I went and sat beside a young man, about 26 years of age, and I spoke to him and I said, how are you going? He said, I'm free. He said, I'm free. He said, I've been coming here for the last six months. He said, I was a drug addict. I was a this. I was, and he rattled off all this stuff. He said, but Jesus delivered me, and I'm free. I talked to a young girl. There's this young girl there, about 20-odd years of age. I spoke to her, and I said, how are you? She said, I am free. She said, I am free. Because, you see, she heard the word of truth. 
And she said, I was this and I was that and I was all these things. And my life was a mess and this was happening. My family was all this. But Jesus Christ has set me free. Friend, don't look at what you see. Look beyond. Matthew, in uh, Mark chapter 16, verse 14, and he said, And he appeared to the eleven as they sat at the table, and rebuked their unbelief and hardness of heart, because they did not believe on those who had seen him after he had risen. Friend, I want to tell you, unbelief is an epidemic portion. Unbelief is the greatest curse that's flooding into the church. And he said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Friend, it's time that we rose up and we listened to these. I pray that you read this verse of Scripture every day for the next week until it gets inside you, until you decide that I'm going to go into all the world and preach the gospel. It's no good praying for revival. You are revival and the revival is in you and it won't happen until you open up your mouth and you start to tell and you start to confess. And you start to tell people that Jesus is alive. Hallelujah. Go into all the world and preach this gospel. What an amazing statement to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. And they will take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it will by name means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. So then after the word had had been spoken to them, He was received up into heaven and sat down at the right hand of God. And they went out and preached everywhere. The Lord working with them and confirming the word through the accompanying signs. Hallelujah. I tell you what, you shut up, God shuts up. You shut up and heaven shuts up. But I got a sneaky feeling. You can get it milking the cow. You can, <laughs> you can get it washing the dishes. You can get it driving the car. As a matter of fact, I'm getting it right now. Anybody else getting it now? Come on, give me a wave if you're getting it now. Come on, hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I just come to praise the Lord. <laughs> Oh, my friends, God is training us. All over Australia, the world, there's got a bunch of people that is training up and raising up and soon the sleeping giant called the church will be awakened by the fire. It will begin to stir. It will begin to rise and it will become to declare that our God reigns. Hallelujah. Our Jesus is alive. Let every devil be a liar. Because our God reigns in Jesus' name. I said last week, I believe that altars are going to be filled with people just wanting more of God. Just wanting more of God. It doesn't mean that you're weak. It doesn't mean that. It just means you're hungry. Uh, People might think so. I don't care what people think. (laughs) Say that to yourself. I don't care what people think. I don't want God to come down in the cool of of the evening and say, Neil, where are you? I want him to find me. Opened and available to him. I'm hungry for a move of God. I'm hungry for his presence. I'm hungry. Anybody else hungry? Why don't you stand to your feet today? If If you want to just come and stand in his presence... Some musicians come and just say, God, I'm hungry. God, I'm hungry. I'm hungry. I'm hungry. God, I'm hungry for a move of your spirit. God, do what you got to do in my life. Draw me close to you. You know that song, Draw Me Close to You? Never let me go. Oh, I lay my life down.
Come on, don't be hurt. Don't be shy. Just come and stand in His presence today. Come on, let's stand. Let's fill this altar with people that are hungry for God. Hungry for a move of your spirit. Hungry, hungry, hungry. Hungry people get fed. People who are hungry get fed. Draw me close to you. Never let me go. Never, 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 never let me go.